Hey guys, really excited for Inspire Collective Part 3. This time we're gonna be sitting down with Hinano Interiors, having a conversation about the beautiful homes that she designs, her journey along with God. So come on, check it out with us. Well, thank you, Russell, for having me. So I was born and raised on the Big Island in a little town called Kilkaha, and it's a homestead, Hawaiian homestead. So very humble, humble beginnings, and I like to say we keep it that way. And so here in Wailua now, married my husband, who's from Wailua, and they're a lot alike in terms of our community. Um, but born and raised in a small community like this, very similar to Wailua, and just very happy to be around people that support you and love you and that you grow with over time. Pastor Lisa's daughter, Karis, was playing volleyball for the same club that my daughter, Lilinoi, played for. And so that was how I met Pastor Lisa and didn't even know they were pastors at the time, actually. So they started playing volleyball, or I might have known, I take that back, I might have known that they were pastors, but we got to know each other a lot more definitely when we were on the road traveling and then with the da our daughters interacting in volleyball. So that's one uh, commonality, commonality that we have is, yeah. is club volleyball and competitiveness. Yeah. I love it. Um, and our girls grew that season with, through volleyball and really got to um, grow with Pastor Lisa and Pastor Mike during that season. They invited us to church, we attended. I had been to the Rise Women's Conference before, which I just absolutely love and we look forward to every year up until, you know, attending. So we started attending Inspire about three years ago and really just honing in on that relationship with Inspire Church. Um, certainly felt like God was calling us there too at the time during that season and just really enjoyed growing up in Inspire over the last three years. Yeah. It's just been instrumental um, to know our pastors and to be shepherded by them as well has been wonderful. In 2007, so several years after I graduated, I decided that I wanted to step out and, and start my own business. So we started, I started in tears by Hinano in 2007. And that was kind of a result of what was happening with the industry at that time. I had recently got laid off from a repping position, a sales rep position, and decided that wasn't my calling entirely. I really wanted to help people with their dreams and visions for their homes to do interior design. So that's when I decided I was going to step back into that and pursue my, my lifelong dream of becoming a designer. Yeah. <laughs> it, 2007 was leading up to the recession and which in Hawaii we normally see two years after what's happening on the mainland. I was working for a mainland company during that time when I got laid off. So really in Hawaii they were starting to feel the effects in 2009. Now, most small businesses, they tell you, well, two years and you either make it or break it within those first two years. And 2009 rolls around and my business is booming and God is doing amazing things, blessing me with clientele that, you know, I never think I'd be able to work with. I'm now working for. Yeah. <laughs> so um, with that came a lot of challenges, being brand new in business. I, I had mentors like my my oldest brother was in business as well, entrepreneur. Um, and a lot of the mistakes that he would share with me, so I always prayed for mentorship because I really felt that if you can save yourself all that heartache that we experience in business sometimes, then, then do it. Get under the wings of your mentors. So my brother had shared a lot about the what to do and what not to do and setting up the business, getting your the proper accounting system in place and an accountant that can support a business that is along that construction type field. So I involved a lot of those type of people early on and I, I really do have to say that was part of the success that came from it was not just my doing, it was everybody that was part of this formula that still remains a part of this formula. I stepped away in 2014 and pursued another uh, calling on me at that time. And in 2019, I had an opportunity to get started again with the business. And I thought, uh oh, okay, here it comes. But the whole time praying and asking God, okay, Lord, is this of you? 
Um, and the worry was that you want it to be, this time I wanted it to be according to his will, according to his timetable. And I didn't want to just step out there without his hand on it. So that's even a harder thing to do is to move on God's time. And all my life I've done things on my own time. And they were not very successful when I did that. So now I'm saying, okay, Lord, you tell me when, you tell me how, you tell me what, who. And I felt like that opportunity came from him. So that was the start of uh, stepping back out. And then 2020 hit, right? The COVID, right? When I was starting to get going again and thought, okay, I'm in a transition. The COVID happened and no one could have predicted that. But through it, we've learned so much. We've grown a lot. And I feel like God gave me time to really hone in on what what this is going to look like coming out of COVID. So I've not lost sight of that vision and that dream and that goal. But I've also asked God to lead and direct me through this time. So I want it to be his way. Yeah. Yeah. And it is his. It's yeah. his business. So. Lord, what do you want me to do? When do you want me to do it? Is always the question I'm asking and sometimes almost frustrating myself <laughs> because you don't want to go before him. But even down to projects that we take on, I'm like, okay, Lord, is this of you? You know, do you want me to do this project during this season? Those are conversations I'm having constantly because you just, when you're asking God to be under his hand, you don't want to fall away from that. And I, I feel strongly about that. So I feel like the, the opportunities, opportunities that we do have are God-bred and blessed. A part of Inspire Collective, there's a lot of entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs that are looking to maybe start something or birth something. And, and in your heart, you knew that you had a dream. And I'm sure there's other entrepreneurs that know that there's a dream that God's mm. placed in their heart and they don't know how to take those steps they don't yeah. know how to you know step in faith and realize mm. what god's placed in them they know deep down what advice would you have to a young entrepreneur a christian who's trying to say god i want to do your will but i'm scared mm. but i know there's a dream that you've placed in me you've created me for a purpose yeah what would you say to them what are some advice or some things that you would to encourage them to to uh, step out i would say that they're absolutely right that god has designed them for a purpose and that their life was God bred even in their mother's womb. That early in, in their life, God had already designed them. And we call it for glorious living. And I think being able to understand that though, Russell, and having someone who maybe is new in faith to understand that you were, God designed you for a purpose in this world. And there's a calling on your life and a purpose for your life. So it's not just pursuing your dream that God planted in your heart, maybe, but it's understanding what God's will is for your life and your call and your purpose and being able to, to maybe sometimes even giving up what you feel is yours to call and fulfill what his purpose is for, for you. And so that to me means designed for glorious living. You're not just living to glorify yourself. It's always about someone else, but more importantly, to glorify God. And when you really come to terms with what the, what your purpose is here on earth, it's always about someone else or, or, or not, right? right. It's always, yeah. you're, that's why God willed us that way. Yeah. So I, I feel like there's a deeper connection and it might be directly, uh, related to what their dream is like mine was being a designer what do i do all day long i help people yeah i feel like god purposed me for that i feel like my character my personality is built around wanting to help others and that's the gift that god has gifted me with so i'm able to serve others and i want to serve them well but I need to understand too what that looks like and what that what serving other means not just to me but what it means to God yeah. and being able to do that well for him will oftentimes mean you'll do it well for others so his vision for us I believe and and for myself is to be able to be completely faithful to what that is that he's calling on your life and enable in order to do that 
you, you have to do the hard work. You have to be obedient. You have to be disciplined with your finances. You have to live accordingly to how you want this end result to look. And so in order for you to get there, oftentimes I'll tell people, write it down, you know, get a good vision board going of where you are, where you want to be, and, and even tie that into where you feel God is calling you and try to find that connection. But I would say just in the little baby steps every day, the little decisions that you should, that you have to make, do that every day, starting off with your daily devotions and understanding, okay, God, what have you called me to do today? And getting on the same page, what God is asking you to do, that's super important, your spiritual journey and walk. Um, in business, those disciplines of following up with customers, making those hard calls, communicating, over-communicating, and just keeping your customer happy along the way and understanding the expectations that have been put on you and expectations maybe you have of your customer or your suppliers or your builders. It's constant communication and making it sure everybody's on board because really that leads you back to your vision. Are we getting to where we want to be with the people who are involved and are we are we being good communicators about what we want to do and where we want to go? If God's planted that in our heart, are we living a life of an example of what that's gonna look like? Five, we don't know when it's gonna happen, five years, 10 years, how long it takes us to get there. God might just bless us with overnight success, right? You just never know. So I think um, that spiritual discipline that comes is, and, and it's a daily living. We mess up, but we have to learn how to retract and get back on track every time we might you know drift off of course get back on and head towards that vision and my favorite verse here and i have it hanging in the house is as for me and my house we will serve the lord it's not an option <laughs> it's not an option no <laughs> Hey guys, hope you were blessed by that conversation with Hinano Interiors. Stay tuned for more Inspire Collective as we in interview more entrepreneurs and business owners doing great things in the marketplace. God bless, until next time.